So this weekend, NASCAR heads to Nashville Super Speedway. Nashville is becoming one of the hottest spots in NASCAR. And this weekend's race might be the hottest race that fans will have to deal with all season. Let's preview Nashville Super Speedway. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news, and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. Who is your pick to win at Nashville Super Speedway? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. Alright, so NASCAR is heading to Nashville for its fourth straight season. The fourth time it's landed on the Cup Series schedule. Nashville Super Speedway for the Ally 400. I'd say we've had some pretty great races at Nashville Super Speedway since its debut on the Cup Series circuit. It's been a, it's been a part of NASCAR for a long time though, being on the Xfinity Series schedule and the Truck Series schedule all the way back in the early 2000s. Before I get to the actual race itself, I do want to talk about the potential fan experience that could be had at Nashville Super Speedway. There was some big complaints after the first race at Nashville Super Speedway that they had a Cup Series date about the heat, about being out in the sun all day. So then they moved Nashville Super Speedway to be a night race. And then this year they moved it back to being a day race. And also starting at the hottest point of the day, I think the race starts at roughly around 2.30 local time. And they are expecting 100 plus temperatures during the day. It's not expected to be a very cloudy day. So that's going to be very difficult and very hard for fans to put through. It's, it's really heavy for what they're putting the fans through on this. Mainly, I'm mainly bringing this up because... Nashville Super Speedway is one of the only, I think I would have to look into it more, but one of the only, if not the only, racetrack on the circuit that does not allow coolers inside of the track, which is really unfortunate. And recently they even took away snacks. You're not allowed to bring in multiple water bottles, it, sa it sounds like. I, I read the policy, it just says water bottle. You can bring in a, an unopened water bottle or an empty water bottle so essentially you can bring in one water for this race unless the policy isn't stating it out properly and that i read something on twitter that they apparently took away you not being able to bring in any snacks it was even there was even a screenshot of it posted on twitter about it and then apparently the next day it wasn't it didn't say that anymore it it was pretty much redacted it was removed so maybe maybe nashville super speedway realized that might have not been such a great idea i just think it's really unfortunate they that they moved this race first of all back to the daytime and it just seems like to me they're just trying to get extra business i don't want to bad talk any racetrack but it seems like from what i've been seeing that nashville super speedway just wants to get in a couple extra bucks because it's going to be a really hot day and people are going to need water to not be dehydrated and go to the hospital. I, I just think that's pretty crazy. I can understand maybe not allowing alcoholic beverages. That's mainly up to the state. I think some tracks, it's up the, it's been up to their discretion on not allowing alcoholic beverages into the track. I could I could understand that. I can deal with that. But at least that let them have a small cooler with water. I I just think that's that's silly and honestly completely unsafe and irresponsible of both SMI and Nashville Super Speedway if that is what ends up happening on Sunday and even Saturday because it's going to be an extremely hot and humid weekend. It's also pretty humid in Nashville. I wouldn't say it's one of the most humid areas in the country but it is pretty humid there 
plus it's going to be 100 plus degrees. So I'm really hoping that they keep the fans in the stands happy and safe because we're going to ha- we're going to have some good racing no matter what. But I'm also hoping that the fan experience, because that's the thing I usually focus on on this channel. If you've noticed, I really enjoy the at track fan experience. That's one thing I really try to push is the fan experience, whether it comes to being at the track or camping in the NASCAR campgrounds, doing both. That's what I like to see, and that's what I, and I want everybody to have a great time and be safe. All right, now let's get to the actual race itself. It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be hot out there. I expect the track to be pretty slick. It should be, it should be a difficult race for these race car drivers, especially depending on how the rubber from the tires stick to the racetrack. It could be a very slick racetrack out there on Sunday if, if it ends up being as hot as it is. And depending on how these tires fall apart, if they, if we get a lot of rubbers stuck on that bottom line, it's going to be, they're going to be chasing that line all, all race long if that is the case. I'm very interested to see how that all works out. I don't know if we'll necessarily see any strategy per se. I think that also is pretty dependent on the tires, on how the tires fall off. If there's a lot of fall off with the tires, we could see frequent pit stops if the tires don't provide a lot of fall off we could potentially see two tire calls drivers just taking gas only during stage breaks and cautions throughout the event i'm expecting a pretty good race nashville super speedway has put on some pretty good events the first three years it has been there some strategy could be sprinkled out throughout I also really like Nashville because it's a very different racetrack compared to a lot of other racetracks we race on the schedule. It having that concrete surface, plus it's a lot bigger of a racetrack. Our other, our other concrete surfaces, we got Bristol, we got Dover, but those are a lot shorter of a racetrack. While this racetrack is a little bit over a mile long, Nashville Super Speedway, it's a very interesting racetrack and I think this race could go any way, but there is a couple of players that have been really competitive here in the first three years that they've had the event. So we're going to start to go through the favorites. This driver actually has three top tens in the three races at Nashville Super Speedway, including a second place finish in his first race at Nashville Super Speedway when he drove the number 42 for Chip Ganassi Racing. And I'm talking about Ross Chastain. I don't know what it is with Ross Chastain and Nashville Super Speedway, but he just seems to really gel at this racetrack. He really he really has a great feel of this racetrack, probably better than everybody else in the field from what it seems like. Like you said, like I said, he got that second place finish for Ganassi at Nashville Super Speedway the first year that they came here, and that was a that was a pretty big surprise. Because Chip Ganassi were really struggling at the time. They ended up getting bought out by Trackhouse. So technically it's actually the same car, just different number. If you really think about it. But Chastain just seems to have a lot of success here. It could potentially be his best racetrack, I'd say. So the Watermelon Man is definitely someone you're going to have to keep your eye out for. And let's get to our next favorite. And this should be no surprise. He actually won... The first event here, that being Kyle Larson. I don't think I need to explain myself too much with this. Kyle Larson is pretty good everywhere we go. It doesn't really matter what racetrack we go to, unless it's a super speedway. I don't expect him to compete for a win at a super speedway. But everywhere else on the schedule, I expect Kyle Larson to get a top five, top three, compete for the win potentially. And Larson has been strong here all three years as well. The Hendrick cars have actually really found a lot of speed here. I think the missing link for Hendrick Motorsports at Nashville this weekend might be William Byron. Byron's been on a little bit of a cold streak. He's been very quiet the last month and a half, maybe two months, I'd say. It's been a real difficult time for William Byron. But I expect Kyle Larson to compete for the win along with his teammate, Chase Elliott, who actually won here in 2022, has been really strong here all three years as well. 
And also, I would consider Alex Bowman a little bit of a dark horse favorite in this event. Like I said, Hendrick have found a lot of speed here in the couple of years that they've had this event. Chevrolet in general actually have seen have seen pretty fast here the three years they've been here. But it being called the Ally 400, Bowman's been very quiet as well, but he's been running top 10, top 15 almost every week. He's going to get a win sooner or later. We'll have to see what he is able to do on Sunday. And the last big favorite that I'll name also should not be a surprise, that being Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin's been really strong here at Nashville Super Speedway as well for all three years. And he's also just been really strong all year. I think the last couple of weeks, he's had a pretty difficult last couple of weeks, I'd say, Denny Hamlin. But I expect him to get back on the horse and compete for a victory this weekend at Nashville Super Speedway. And for his Gibbs teammates, I wouldn't be surprised to see any of them compete for the win. Truex, fresh off announcing his retirement. He could have a good run. It, it, it seems like it could be a strong track for him. Christopher Bell, fresh off of winning at New Hampshire. He's he's pretty hot right now out of every driver in the Cup Series, I'd say. He might have the most momentum heading in to this event. And then you have Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs... I, I was really fond of him earlier on in the year. I really thought he was going to get a victory. But I'd say the last month, maybe even a month and a half, he's really fallen off on performance. It's clear what the worst performing Gibbs car right now is, and that is Ty Gibbs in the number 54. But I feel like right when I count him out, that's when he's going to get to victory lane. So I just think he's somebody to keep an eye out for, as you should for every Gibbs Carr and Hendrick Carr in the field every week at this point. But who is my pick to win the event? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with the back to back. I'm gonna have to go with Ross Chastain. I think. I think Ross Chastain gets the job done here. He's just been so incredibly strong at this racetrack. I know Trackhouse as a whole has been struggling this season. They have just not look nearly as good as they have the last couple of years. I don't know, something about Nashville because I remember I remember saying this last year about Trackhouse. Last year Trackhouse was struggling pretty much all year long. Then all of a sudden when they got the when they got to Nashville Super Speedway, Chastain, I think he put it on the pole and just dominated that event into the night and ended up going up into the stands to eat watermelon with the fans. It was a real coming out party last year for Chastain. I think he, I think this is the point where Trackhouse and Ross Chastain turn it around, which leads me right into my underdog because I think my underdog pick is going to be Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez has shown really good speed at Nashville Super Speedway as well. Does not have as great results as Chastain and a couple other drivers I've mentioned. But he looked pretty strong this last week in New Hampshire. He looked pretty strong at Iowa as well before before he wrecked Kyle Larson. But I'm thinking this could be a pretty big week for Trackhouse to turn it around. I have a pretty good feeling heading into this event. I know that Justin Marks really wants to get the job done in Nashville, a place that's very important to him. Even though Nashville Super Speedway is nowhere close to downtown Nashville, It is Nashville Super Speedway. It's considered to be a home race for Trackhouse in a way. We'll have to see what they're able to do on Sunday at Nashville Super Speedway. But give me all your thoughts down below. What do you think about Nashville Super Speedway? What do you think about the potential fan experience that they'll have this weekend? It doesn't sound like it might it doesn't sound like it's going to be a good one to me personally. But would you be willing to go through all that to watch this race? This might be the first time I would maybe say no to a race personally. But that is just my opinion. I want to get everybody else's opinion on that as well. Plus, who do you think is going to win at Nashville Super Speedway? Do you agree that Trackhouse will be strong? What about Gibbs? What about Hendrick? Let me know down below. But that will do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.